Good morning and God bless you. We're delighted that you've joined with us here this morning. Perhaps this is your first time uh, viewing and we're glad to have you with us and trust that you are blessed by what you hear this morning. We wanna to continue to pray for our president in our nation and we wanna to continue to pray for our local community uh, wherever you may be. And we want to pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church and members in particular. Our very own brother, uh, James Reed, had shoulder surgery yesterday. We wanna keep him in prayer. Perhaps you have a special unspoken request. This is a perfect time to make that known unto God. Let's pray together. Father, we love you, we praise you, we worship you. We thank you for your spirit. We thank you for your word. Father, we pray for our president and our nation. We pray that you keep your hand on him and navigate his steps in these troubling times. Father, we pray for our local community here that you will continue to open up doors of opportunity for us to reach the hungry and the thirsty. And Father, we pray for Cornerstone Pentecostal Church that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out your presence provision and protection. Father, we pray for Brother Reed that you will keep your hand on him and touch him, God, with a special measure of healing, health, and strength. We ask all of this in the name above every name, the name of Jesus Christ, and everybody said, Amen. Praise God. I want to go to one verse of scripture here found in the book of Proverbs. Proverbs 24 and verse number 16. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But the wicked shall fall into mischief. I'm going to read that one more time. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again. But, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. One of the very noticeable takeaways of that passage of scripture is the fact that a just man will not only fall, but he will rise. And so one has to assume that the full spectrum of being a just person is not just that you have frailties and make mistakes, but the reality of it is, is you're gonna get back up. You're gonna keep on ticking. You're gonna keep on moving forward. You're gonna keep on being what you're supposed to be. You're gonna keep on growing in grace and moving forward. But the Bible also in contrast says, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. It does not say that they rise again. It does not say that they find a place of recuperation and regeneration and restoration. It just says that the mischief, uh, or it says, I'm sorry, that the wicked shall fall. I wanna tell you that we don't encourage people to make mistakes here. We do not encourage people to drop the ball. We do not encourage people to um, sin have those odd moments where they fail God and fail themselves. The reason for that is, is because people are going to do that all on their own as part of the human dynamic. The Bible is quick to say though, if we confess our sins, he is just and righteous to forgive us our sins. But we need to be honest because making mistakes is one of the ways in which we learn. We have to learn from our mistakes. In fact, I would have to say that I would have to put that at the top of the list for the learning curve for the individual is that you learn from your mistakes. And I'll just say this, as long as you're learning from your mistakes, your mistakes should become fewer, not greater. And so making mistakes is all part of the process. But so is getting back up. One of the things that has 
been a um, an understanding that is negative, but nonetheless, it is a reality, is the fact that all it took was a pandemic for some people to be removed from their place in the church of the living God. Um, it's almost been five months that I've heard from some people or seen some people. It's almost been that long since I've had any contact with some people. And I realize that there's some people out there that say, well, pastor, you should come looking for the one sheep. But not everybody is in that condition of being that lonely, isolated sheep. There's some people that have been in the church for a while that should know better. And I'm certainly not in any way, shape or form removing myself from my responsibilities because I do, I do do that. I do reach out and try to make contact. But it would be a great benefit to this pastor, and maybe you don't even go to this church, but maybe wherever you do go to church, it's good every once in a while to just let the pastor know, hey, pastor, don't worry about me. I'm still here. Um, I realize I can't come to church. Maybe I'm not feeling well. Maybe I've got the virus. Maybe I'm just in quarantine, whatever the case may be. But just staying connected is a great comfort to the pastor. And I believe it's a great way to stay accountable and to manifest your submission to authority. But I've noticed in a negative way that there are some people that have fallen off the map because of the pandemic. My brother and my sister, if you fall, wipe the dust off, spit out the gravel, and get back up. We have heaven to gain and hell to shun. One more time, I wanna say that the just man, notice that the Bible says that he is a just man. He is a just man even when he falls. And I believe that the reason for that is is because that same just man that fell rises up again. It's time to get back up. It's time to get back in the saddle and it's time to move forward. We have heaven to gain and hell to shun. God bless you. Thank you for joining us here this morning. We we'll look forward to seeing you tomorrow.